Thank you for your son that you sent down on this earth to die for our sins. We uh, thank you so much for that sacrifice. We uh, come to you in prayer this morning to ask you to be those who are in prayer list. We ask you to be with Janice and her mother. We ask you to watch over, over them and be with Larry and Sue and watch over them. And we uh, ask you to be with Kathy, watch over Kathy and help her in her times of troubles and trials she is going through. We, we just ask you to watch over this. We come to you in prayer to watch, ask you to watch over those who are in the fires in California. We just ask you to watch over this situation. We are so fortunate and so lucky here in this state, in this, in this country that we have you to go to, to pray to for such things that's happened to other people that we have no idea what, what they're going through. We just ask you to watch over them and help them as they can be helped and to try to get their lives back to some sort of normal. We ask you to go, we go through this through this today through our lesson. We thank you for Scott and we thank you for giving Scott the knowledge to teach us. We thank you for Elders and Deacons that has got the knowledge to teach us our teachers and try to bring others under Christ. We again thank you so much for all the blessings you give us. We take so many blessings we have and we ignore them so much that we just forget all the blessings we have. In your son's name we pray. Amen.
disciples came together, one of the things that they did was to study and fellowship. And they also had uh, this memorial service. Jesus left us this service to remember that sacrifice. And as we partake of the bread representing his body, I'd ask you to recall that sacrifice. Would you bow with me, please? Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the privileges that you give us. We thank you for this privilege of prayer. And we thank you and lay our petitions at your feet. But this time, we thank you for this bread that represents your son's body. We'd ask you to help us as we partake. To partake of it in a manner that's uh, according to uh, its purpose that we might recall that sacrifice on Calvary. Through his name we pray. Amen. Would you continue to pray with me, please? Heavenly Father, we thank you again for fruit of the vine, we ask you to, through the eye of faith, see that sacrifice to truly appreciate what you've done for us. Through your son's name we pray. Amen. This concludes the Lord's Supper. As we continue to worship and think about uh, the love of Christ,
good to see you all here. There are, I believe, a, a few people absent this morning, but uh, we, of course, want to keep those people in prayer. And uh, today we may have told you, may have prepared you, that today we're going to be talking about the Midwest Children's Home and some of the work that was accomplished this year. We'll have a few slides uh, for those that are new to show you some of the work that's done has been done previously. And uh, so while I'm going to be sharing with you those photos, telling you some stories about what happened, we're also going to be turning to a few passages in our Bibles. And I don't have those passages on the screen this morning, uh, but we will be turning to those passages. To help us, keep in mind, you can see there, uh, it says good works. And really, of uh, really thinking about why it is that we send a group of people to go down there, why it is that Christians gather together and go do this kind of work. That as Christians, God expects us to be working. God expects us to be able to help people when we have the opportunity. And we'll talk about that more as we go throughout this morning's lesson. So again, to just share with you a few photos from the past, things that have been done. Uh, if you were here, you may have seen these before. But what we got to do in 2019, and I believe this was on the day we were going to leave last uh, in 2019... Uh, was we had pulled up some of the rocks, we pulled up the bushes, and then they needed concrete poured right there in front of the old school where we stay at. And so it was not an easy project, and Cameron reminded us, and I, can, and I think you can even see clearly from the photos of the past, we started that project in 2018. They told us, well, someone else will take care of it, and the someone else was us. And so a whole year went by in 2019, we came back to finish the project. But it was nice, it's leveled out, and so this was the first time we got to go as a group together and see that finished product, uh, and we're hope, hoping that it's been a benefit to them. The other thing to take note is, again, in 2019, uh, you can perhaps see that left photo of a ladder, and if you can see that dot up there, you may not recognize who that dot is, but that was Mike, brave and courageous as always, climbing that ladder. And they needed some fans put up into the, this barn they have. They use it, and now they use it for weddings and different venues, different occasions. But they needed two fans put into this barn. And so Mike was on the outside working on it. And then if you can see the other image, you might be able to notice uh, a yellow scaffolding, which doesn't look too bad. Uh, and I believe Dave is on that. But if you were to notice to the left of an orange scaffolding, which is much higher, Again, they'd have to climb that scaffolding to be on the inside working with the fans. So uh, quite a bit of work that goes down when we go down there, quite a bit of things to do, uh, things that you're not used to doing. But we've also got projects such as this that we did in 2019, that they have a playground at their campsite, and they need some mulch put around that play area, and so we took care of that for them. I can tell you after two years has gone by and we went back it probably needs some more mulch just being out in the open and the weather, things of that. But a, a bigger project they have there at the play area was uh, one of the pieces had got broken. And so I don't believe we were able to do that this go-around. Uh, but they've had a number of people come in and help them already this summer. And there may be a few more that come in to help them. So uh, I, I, I don't have the time, can't share with you all the projects we've done in the past. Uh, but I want to encourage you to take note of those who've gone to Midwest Show and Home. If you have any more questions uh, about what happened this year, what's happened in the years past, to certainly talk to them, uh, ask them how things went. I know some of you have made uh, it known that you'd like to go next year and are planning for that, and that is exciting. And it's because of that that we'll want to, again, understand why it is that we're involved in this work. If you will, turn in your Bibles to Galatians chapter 6, verse 10. Galatians chapter 6, verse 10. Galatians chapter 6, verse 10. And as we see how it tells us as Christians how we ought to live our lives, it says, Therefore, as we have opportunity... Let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. As we have the opportunity, there were those who went down who had to take off of work, who had to schedule around other things, and said, well, I'm going to go down and spend time at the children's home. I'm going to 
have the opportunity from morning until night to work to help these people out. The, the children's home, uh, they have the people who live on site there that take care of children. And I believe every Sunday that they take those kids to services, they go, they meet with the Lord's Church in that area, perhaps different congregations depending uh, how many are down there. But it's uh, an opportunity for us as a part of the Lord's Church as well to go down and, and help these people as much as we can. And, I, and again, I've already said, and I hope from this presentation or pre presentations in the past, that you don't walk away with the idea, we are the only people that go down and help Midwest Children's Home. There are many other people that go down. Now, sometimes they may go just as long as we do, a whole week. Sometimes it may just be a day, just a weekend. But Midwest Children's Home appreciates all and any of that work. And so as you think about next year, and you think about if you want to go, and you realize, well, I just can't commit a full week. Perhaps you can commit a day or two as you have the opportunity to do good to all, but especially the household of faith. And so we're doing that for those people there. There are fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, members of the church, and we're taking care of them, helping them in this way. Another passage we can turn to is Titus chapter 3. Titus chapter 3, verse 8. Titus 3, verse 8. Take note here what it says. It says, This is a faithful saying, and these things I want you to confirm constantly, that those who have believed in God should be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable to men. Now again, I understand that not everyone can go to the Midwest Children's so Home. I understand not everyone can go to buy you a battery. I understand those things. And there are those opportunities here back at home or where you live. There are those opportunities where you can reach out, where you can help one another. Uh, we've had our work day this past summer, and a number of you came out and helped with that. We have the list on the back door, and a number of you have signed up to help with those things. And so as you found the opportunity, you're doing those things, and you're maintaining, continuing in good works. Not satisfied, not checking it off of some list, Say, well, I've done five good works, that's enough as far as me to be a Christian, but yet you continue, you maintain those good works. That ought to be the goal for each and every one of us. Now, to explain the image that you see here, it, it's marked out, so it is kind of tough to read, uh, but this is a whiteboard of all the projects uh, that they asked us to do. We, of course, then wrote some of our own projects on there as well that we took and uh, just for an example, we don't have a picture of it, uh, but one of the things that got wrote up on this board uh, was refilling the soap. Now again, Midwest Children's Home didn't ask us specifically. They didn't believe we had the skills uh, to do that uh, more so than anyone else. But we noticed when we got there, the, the soaps in the restrooms needed to be refilled, and so we took it upon ourselves to help. We had the opportunity, we had the time, and so we did it. Again, when, when you're down there, it's a much different situation. You're getting up. Some of us got up a lot earlier than normal. Uh, and so of uh, working outside constantly, and that's what we go to do, is to do the work. And so the question always is, how can I be helping? How is it I can get involved? And we try to do the best we can to get everyone involved. We took this year 11 people, and so there were different projects, different things that people were qualified to do. And we're going to talk about that some more. We had Lainey and her friend Cadence came. And one of the projects they got to do was to clean up uh, the, the front space into uh, the school. And I believe they even ended up helping clean the inside of the school. Uh, some of you may have heard. Maybe you haven't yet. But before we got down there, uh, they had an air conditioning unit in their window in the girls' bedroom. And when we came, it was pushed out. There were some kids there who had pushed the air conditioning unit out of the window to get into the school to get ice cream. Now, I like ice cream. I don't like it that much. But, uh, so there, there was some cleanup that needed to be done in that way. And uh, if you can also see that concrete, that, that entrance into the school, it's covered in grass. If you don't know, don't remember, 
down there at the children's home, again, they have these homes uh, where parents live. They have their own children, and then they take in children for perhaps a time. And one of the things those kids can do uh, to earn money is to mow, to mow the children's home. Now, I don't have an aerial view of it, and unless you've been there, you may not be able to grasp just how large of a space it is. But they started mowing on Monday, and I thought that was clever. I thought mowing Mondays, that's a good way to remember what day do we mow? We mow on Mondays. But they mowed on Monday, they mowed on Tuesday, they mowed on Wednesday. I left, I don't know if they mowed Thursday, uh, and they may have mowed every day of the week. But you have to understand there's a, the two school buildings. They need to mow around those. They have the homes where there's about eight or so homes. And then they have a campsite where the barn is and where they have some uh, structures there for campers to stay at. And they do this all mowing with push mowers. Now, they, again, it's a way for them to earn some money. They take breaks and things like that. But it is quite a bit of work. And so Laney and Keynes were able to help out and clean the inside of the school where we would stay. They were able to clean the outside, make it just look nice. Thankful for that. Cameron took these photos, and I'm sure Cameron enjoys the one photo uh, more so than the other. But uh, one of the tasks, one of the responsibilities for us to do was to change, look at emergency lights. Now, in the school building, the issue was there was some wiring issue. I'm not a, an electrician. I wasn't about to get up there and mess with wires. But in the other uh, buildings, they just asked us to take a look at it, take note of which ones work, take note of which ones don't work. So there, in that right photo, that's what I did, climbed up a ladder, checked it. We took Laney and Cadence that morning to the admin building. They got to climb the ladder, push, push the button, find out which ones worked. But again, probably what Cameron enjoyed is that far left photo that while we're there in the barn, I noticed there was an emergency light that didn't say exit on it, and the flap was open. And so I said, oh, well, I'll fix that easily. I'll do. You see I'm on my tippy toes there, and I'll push it back in. That's all. It's real simple, real easy. Well, I pushed it in the wrong spot, and it fell out. Again, Cameron got to enjoy that thoroughly about me breaking things. And so uh, it wasn't easily, easily enough fixed. I don't have that photo of it being fixed, but I promise you before we left, it was put back together. One of the bigger projects, one of the bigger things that had to be done was in house number six, it needed a sump pump and it needed some stairs to put into that. And so understanding uh, what all went into this project is one of the bigger projects. You see that far left photo there, you can see of one standing at the top of where the stairs should have been. Uh, there was a set of steps and they took it out there, I believe that first day on Monday, took the steps out. And then they had to go in and actually cut out a spot for that sump pump. Now, I'm going to take that that is Mike down there working on that hole down there for the sump pump. And you and I can see Mike from the top. But what I was told, I wasn't there, but there's about 8 or 12 feet from the top to the bottom. And Gordon was standing at the top of that, looking down at Mike. And when Mike was using the saw to cut the concrete, there was so much dust, Gordon could not see Mike. Uh, just how bad it was. But, again, it was something that needed to be done. It was necessary. And because of the work, then now they have a, a working sump pump. Down there, you can see Akeem found himself uh, down there as well to help out and work with that project. And on the right is where Mike, again, got to use uh, the saw and, I believe, the, the jackhammer. I know Dave was also in that area working and helping out, but to feed that pipe out uh, from the basement to outside. Now you may ask yourself, how is it they got down there if they took out the steps? They just took a ladder. They just leaned that ladder up against it. I thankfully never had to climb that ladder. I never had the opportunity to fall off of said ladder. Uh, but Mike and Dave would use that ladder.